many of our warriors out to patrol and assist the guard and the watch. Zito, Baron, have either of you uh, seen a symbol like this? Uh, Zito in your studies, or Baron, you about the city? Does anything about those symbols seem to be familiar to me? Uh, roll a history check. History? Zito, you get a sense that this symbol is... You, you remember reading about it in your studies at the, the Orion Tower. Um, you can't recall everything that you re remember reading about it, but it is a sigil, and you're fairly certain that it has something to do with a dimensional seal. Specifically, you read about it that is something connected to the gatekeepers. Yeah, I remember seeing something similar to that, but I can't quite recall what it means. But I remember reading it back at the back in the library where we just were. What's it related to? Do you know? Uh, s something about dimensional travels and uh, gatekeepers. We need to see Manshun now. Who? Manshun. It, it, you said this name several times, but I never, never heard of him. There was a book we got when we were on the other plane of existence. It was used to help us get back to this plane of existence. I gave it to the wizard Manshun because he requested it after. Uh, we came through the gate. The gate was in his uh, residence, so I assumed that it was something that he was either uh, safekeeping or possibly looking over. But anything related to the gatekeepers, Manshun is going to be our best uh, source of information to tell us more about it. We need to go see him at once. Hang on, wait. Have you met Manshun before you gave him the book? No. So you you gave a complete stranger a book that you obtained in a complete different dimension? Well, I mean, he did ask for it. I mean, to be fair, it was a book from this dimension that was in an average bookstore with the only being on a cat's, you know, collar. It wasn't very kept well. I'm pretty sure anyone that was intent on finding it, I mean... Those ghouls were looking for the book, and they seemed to find the library pretty easily. If there were any smarter than just some common street god, I'm pretty sure they would have found it without any trouble. Plus, it was something we can't use. Manshin seems to know a lot more about it than we do. Do you even know how or where to find him? Well, no, but we can find out. Suppose... Karen might know where Mansoon is. She did know of him, and, you know, she did seem like she was informed. Didn't say he was a bad, all good person, just kind of there, if anything. Is she rocking one of the rings that we have? Of course she does. I can ask her right now. I can ask her. I got my ring on. Hold on real quick. Um, semi all to Karen. Semi all to Karen. Do you know where Mansoon lives? Who the fuck is Karen? You hear, the your name? you hear the familiar voice of Keller Vizar on the other end of the ring emanating f as the Sybaris Dragon Shard crystal in your ring glows orange. Oh, sorry, I was, I was copying Zeta. Hey, we need to know where Manshun is. Manshun? Manshun resides in Kolot Taos. Uh, Bauer, do you know how far that is away from here? Yeah, not too far. I say we go pay Manshun a visit first thing in the morning. Was that all, Samael? That's it. I know it doesn't seem like it's that important, but trust me, it might be. Tell her um, I said hi. Siegfried says hi. I forgot to mention a few things before you left. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, there has been a crime spree affecting the noble estates, and it's increased guard presence in the upper wards, so 
Try not to open the carry weapons. Doesn't matter if you're wearing the rings or not. They will arrest and give you a fine and an edict. No exceptions. Oh, by the way, uh, were there any weird symbols there at the crime scenes? Yes, it was a spiral symbol. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, one of the lost sigils, of the, the dimensional seals. All right, thanks. We're going to look into it. This entire time, Yathana has been staring at you intently, just back and forth, just sort of like watching you raise your fist up to your face and talking into your hand. And Savra is just kind of like standing in the corner, like astounded. I'm going to look back at them and say, oh, yeah, um, when we came back, apparently this group called them Petu Arcanum knew that we were, were alive. And they asked us if we would uh, help them investigate things around the city. They gave me this nifty ring. The High Wizard of Sean has called upon you. Yes. That's she very... said you were friends. Indeed we are. Um, she and I and the new Lord Mo Mayor, we were friends long ago. Um, there always... Uh, and she sort of stumbles with words for a moment. After her husband passed, we sort of fell out of sorts. I kept in contact with Keller, but they're all took it to heart. And Keller filled the position that was once held by her husband. I understand. No clean endings, huh? I'll just be careful about they're all and about mentioning Keller. The High Wizard is, of course, bound to serving the council and serving the city. But there is tension. Not within the Order itself, but between Keller herself and Leryl. I appreciate the warning, but you know as well as I do that within five minutes of me leaving here, I'm going to forget his name. It was um, her name, actually, Samayo. You see what I mean? It's happening already. That other matter that we discussed, um, I will send you a, a message later on it. The matter from a month ago. Ah, thank you. It's not appropriate to mention it here. No offense to your companions. Oh, they understand. Siegfried looks fully and utterly offended. He understands. So you're back. I assume you would like your reward? You know, uh, I'm torn. We've been gone for so long. Has there been any relief whatsoever for the bookstore? To my knowledge, Uza has been out of sorts if you will um, she did pay for the services of the order but she has been a bit of a recluse over the last month I have not personally seen or spoken to her since she delivered payment I feel bad accepting payment for this when she paid for the um, help pay for all that in the past and I've heard there was also some money taken up for our memorial. Um, I'd like to try to give that back if possible if it doesn't offend anybody else in the group. I believe it is held in trust by um, the followers of the White. They were the ones that organized it. What does everybody think? Should they disperse it back to the community or should we go ahead and collect the reward? I say we should just ride over the area in Mr. R's carriage and just throw the money out. Of course he would. No, that one might call it right. The Anybody moment, else have an opinion? The moment that you mention the word riot, um, Savra Bellabranta, you notice Byron visibly stiffens and begins her eyes begin darting around the room. And then she looks down. 
Oh, yeah, something like that occurred already? Wait, what? Have there been riots? Yathana looks to Savra and then back at you and says, well, of course you wouldn't know. There have been riots in the cogs between workers and the Warforged. Do you know what caused it? I'm not 100% certain. I only know that there were some worker groups that took offense to the Warforged. Their natural haughtiness and ability to work long hours and many were killed increasing god presence down below which is make no mistake the cogs are a rough area dask is everywhere down there monstrous individuals have a high presence in that area i have a quick question so if gods are increased in the upper areas and the cogs does that mean they're even more spread thin than already how much extra force do they have well in a city of 200,000 the citadel the king's guard the watch they are stretched thin as it is the unrest in the cogs that unfortunate business a month ago with the protests that it has not been good commerce has been affected quite a bit we have seen an increase in the destitute and the downtrodden if not for the, w the followers of the white I honestly I don't know if the sovereign host and the cleansing f the cathedral could care for the folk that have streamed in. High Hill itself I'm has been completely sealed off as of late. No travel in and out of that area. I okay. feel like something more nefarious than we are seeing is that brew here. It's a bit suspicious that all of this is happening all at the same time. As well as, even though we do have a new Lord Mayor, all the mayhem of transferring everything under a new one would still cause heavy implications. I don't we'll know. Just this all just time seems time. sketchy. Leral has requested from Brayland for more, more troops. And within the next week or so, is ex we are expected to see reinforcements from the major settlements and cities. An entire contingent from Rote is on its way. Well, that's good at least. It will make things difficult. Relations. It is everything that we can do at this moment to keep the crowds, to keep the violence from spilling up from the cogs. Last month it was Dask and the Bolromar clan feuding. And now it's the damn Warforged. And of course these murders that are occurring in the lower wards, randomly. Well, don't worry, we'll t try to take care of that as best we can. I do what you must. You've gone through yes. a lot. If everything you tell me is true, Is there anything else you need of us before we take our leave? Be careful. And do stop in a bit more often. It has been... <sighs> Your presence, a lack thereof, has been felt. I understand. Hopefully we won't travel to any more planes in existence besides this one. Perhaps you'll tell me all about it sometime over some mulled wine. Uh, perhaps. Well, I leave you to it. The gods will not harass you. 
Um, we promise not to harass them either. Sabra. I'm going to salute Sabra before we take our leave. Sabra gives you the one finger salute and then grins at you. I grin back, spit on my heel, and walk out the room. As you head out into the main cathedral proper, you see that the the lines of soldiers have now completely parted, and the guards that were there have gone about their business now. And the as you begin to exit the cathedral, you st- you see the site of the tents that are set up in the and the pavilion, and you see more of these robed individuals, still streams of people coming up and, and gathering sacks and supplies and things and then walking away. You see entire families of destitute individuals walking up to these tents. And currently, the familiar sight of Mr. R's carriage is nowhere to be found. Guys, while we're waiting for Mr. R to get back, we need to really discuss this. Siegfried, Byron, what do you want to do with the reward for our funds for our uh, work? Well, more importantly, because I think we all agree to give it back because it's ill-gotten gain at this point. We cause more harm. But I think we all also need to talk about, you know, everything that's going on. I think we should also take a few days after we reunite with all of our old friends per se, even though it's been a day for us, I think we should listen around and see if we can get any information on everything that's going on, because it's really highly suspicious. Everything's happening a bit too well-timed, if you know what I'm saying. I appreciate your good intentions, but some of us have to work for a living. Byron, what do you want to do with your uh, share of the reward? Oh, I agree. I agree with Siegfried. We need to give it to the poor up here, because uh, basically I was getting a little anxious, because I'm we need to speak outside their present. Because basically, since all the guards are up guarding the nobles, dealing with the cogs, we are the only force that's going to help the lower levels. Do you There's really no want to help the lower levels, though? I thought you uh, didn't really like the war forge. No, that's the cog. The lower oh, the levels cogs. is where the normal people are. That's where our inn yes. is, and that's where my family lives. It sounds so like it's starting to move up to the upper levels as well. Yeah, but... Uh, if you lose the middle level, that's like the middle class. You're not going to have anything else. That's where everything's made. That's where everything's done. Everyone lives off of everything off the middle level. Oh, I agree. I'm insinuating that it's probably getting worse down there because of spilling over to up here. We need to get down there fast. I have a feeling that speaking to Manchin is probably going to be our best bet in defining who we need to kill to fix this. I have a lot, well, of, I have a lot of contacts within the city that uh, I need to I talk actually... Over happen to have a contact in the cogs that we can find yeah but that's in the cogs we're actually more worried about the uh lower ward murders right now yes but here's the thing if the cogs is the sketchiest place anything bad happens there's at least root of information down in the cogs where do you go when you're trying to plan something and find bad bastards where no one wants to go the cogs okay where are we going once your girl gets here byron I was going to go to our inn. That's, that would be our base of operation. So, Siegfried, um, can you get those paper birds out and send messages to the people in the city, your contacts, and have them contact us at the end? Um, I can. And you said you have a separate set of contacts, correct, Byron? There's several people I know within uh, the lower wards that could... Uh, Maybe to gain us some information. Is it somebody we can contact by letter, or is it someone we need to uh, go visit in person? Um, We can send a letter to most, but one I would need to see in person. Very well. And um, Siegfried, write one to Manshun as well. Tell him we uh, need to speak with him of great importance and ask him if he can schedule a date for us to meet him. Tell them we would like for it to be as soon as possible, preferably in the morning. All right. I send that to Manchun. I send another paper to Blue saying we didn't met, but say that Silver told me I could talk to him if I ever needed help and just 
inquire if he knows about anything sketchy going on in the city. And that should be it. For okay. Right. Um, what about Byron's contacts? Is, so, Byron, is there anybody in particular you'd want to send a letter to, or do you want to wait and try to meet them? Um, well, a lot of people I know have offices near me or uh, contacts. Well, There's a friend of mine that runs a coach company that uh, could uh, reach out and maybe uh, bring a counselor over and we'll okay. have to see him. We'll uh, wait for responses from the first two letters at the end and see what we can um, see if we can plan from there because it sounds like your contacts, we can hit them all in a bundle along the way. If I'm understanding this correctly, is that correct? Correct. Most of my contacts are near the end. Okay. And that order that has our funds currently, Siegfried, could you send them a letter and tell them that we apologize for the inconvenience and distribute that back, our reward back out independently to who it needs to go to? Actually, I only have one bird left, and I actually need to send it to someone else. That's okay. I'm going to go inside and uh, ask one of the guards if they can get a message over to that order. Is that something we can do? Uh, which order were you w wishing to speak with? I can't remember their name. The one that's currently holding our funds. Oh, the followers of the white. Well, they're a couple of yards away from you, currently distributing uh, items to the poor. I'm going to walk over there and introduce myself, apologize for the mishap, and ask if they can distribute the uh, funds for our reward back out to the community or whoever it needs to get. Okay. Um, as you begin walking over towards the the tents, uh, Samayo, you see a familiar sight of a raven-haired woman with olive-colored skin. And she turns and she looks in your direction and she gives you a smile. And it, it, is, it is the woman from the train. Hey, I'm a smile way back. It's, uh, what's her face? Uh, Yasmina, I believe. And as you get closer, you notice that Yasmina doesn't appear to be wearing any robes, but all the other individuals around here um, are wearing these very plain, very simple, like almost burlap sack style cloth um, robes that are covering them from head to toe. And every single one of these individuals has a shaved head. Except for her, she doesn't have a shaved head. Uh, correct. She is completely pristine, exactly how you remember her from before. But all of the individuals around her, they all have shaved heads, the men and the women. I'm a small wave at her, but I'm still going to deliver my message. Okay. Siegfried's last message he's going to write is explain the situation to all that he's known and apologizing for his absence to the House Falarin. Siegfried, if you Smart. would be so kind as to create a note in the notes tab with all of the messages that you have sent out, that would be awesome. All right. So, Samael, how do you, you wish to approach the tent and speak to someone? I'm just going to uh, very low-key. I'm not going to try to make a scene. Just uh, pull somebody aside or catch somebody when their attention is drawn off to the side and uh, pull them closer and introduce myself, explain my situation, and uh, ask them to deliver a message that the funds need to be appropriated properly. You find a male shifter, a familiar-looking male shifter, but he is completely bald. It is your sorcerer friend. Bren. Hey. Hey, man, you still playing with torches? You didn't burn your hair off, did you? Oh, no, man. I uh, I joined up with them, and, you know, it, things were kind of tough uh, after a, a whole business at the warehouse. I uh, got into a bit of a trouble, and the order, uh, the followers of the White, they, they, they brought me in. They, they helped me out, and I've become a member. It's been great. Well, that's great, man. Uh, did you hear we died? 
Yeah, that's crazy. But you guys are alive. That's amazing. Yeah, man. That's actually what I was coming to speak with you about. Um, some people have put donated money and done a lot of things to help out with our memorial. But as you can see, we're still alive and well. Believe it or not, we actually got sucked into another plane of existence where time actually moved weird. And basically, we were there for like one day, but like 25 days went by or something crazy like that. It, it's it, it's hard stuff to comprehend. It's like, well, you're a sorcerer. You probably get it, but I'm not sure I get it yet. But anyway, point being is that we have funds for a job we were doing when we got sucked away that's currently being held by this order. And we were wondering if y'all could send a message to somebody and see if you can get those funds appropriated where they could best be used uh, to make up for the funds that were used for our memorial. No, that's, that's no problem, man. That's no problem at all. I can I can totally, totally do that for you. I can just uh, talk to the head of the order, um, the head of the followers, and um, and uh, see see about doing that for you. Um, were you needing anything else? Like actually, man, I have one more small question for you. Yeah, go ahead, man. Uh, that girl over there with the dark hair gives me a deep. I'm, see if I can point her out to it. Do I still see her? Yep, she's still standing there. She's still handing out supplies to people as they approach the tables. I met her on a train a while back, man. She seems pretty cool. What do you know about her? Oh, Yaz. Yaz is pretty cool. Yaz is a uh, pretty powerful uh, warlock, actually. What? Yeah. Wow, yeah, she's. Man, I didn't even know that. She's not a member of the followers, but she's been helping us out, you know, at least um, ever since we got pushed out of uh, High Walls. Yeah, that was warlock, some na- that was some nasty business. And she said she's a warlock. Yeah. I guess she's not one of them evil types. She's actually seems to be pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. She's got she's got a, a a little girl that's also a little boy. It's the strangest thing ever. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I um, met her child first, actually, before I met her. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know where the kid is right now, but um, yeah, she's been here for several hours helping us out. That's cool, man. Um, is she easy to talk to? Like easy to approach? Yeah, she's super friendly. She's it's amazing, man. Ever since she got here, it seems like we've actually had more people showing up to help us out. It's the strangest thing. Well, that's cool. Uh, look, man, you heard we got an end now, right? Really. You, yeah, you ought to come like, over and hang out sometime. Like, like an actual place, like a place you own? Well, I'm not on the deed for it. It felt wrong for me being a public figure in the religion to actually own property in the city. So I left my name off of it. But yeah, everybody else's name's on it. We got it in right here in town. Oh, man, that's great. Where is it located? Um, I don't remember the address for it real quick. Let me go back and check with everybody. I'll give you the address real fast. Yeah, please. That would be awesome. Uh, you know, if you guys ever need anything, if you need some help, and you know, I can talk to some of the other followers, and uh, we can come down, and uh, you know, we can pull weeds, or if you need some painting done, we can do that for you too. Oh, that would be awesome, man. We'd really appreciate that. Maybe we can uh, feed you guys while you're down there. We can make like a big event out of it, hang out. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we're all, we're we're always uh, looking forward to you know setting up potlucks. Uh, you know, we had a really awesome one several weeks ago. Um, uh, <laughs> it was the memorial, actually. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's still great, though. I'm glad people had fun at it. Uh, hey, if we actually do this, you think you can get Yasmina to come down there? Yeah, I'm sure she would be. Uh, she, she'd be happy to come down there. Where where'd you say? Cool. Where'd you say it was again? I, I'm gonna find out right now. Hey, uh, Siegfried, I'm gonna yell out for Siegfried. Go for Siggy. Yeah, you you hey. do have a you do have a ring. I should mention that you can talk to him with. Uh, should I do that though? Is it like just two way direct communication, or can everybody hear? Uh, essentially, the sound emanates from the stone in your ring, um, and it works like the sending spell. Um, you can send messages up to twenty five words or less. Uh, Siegfried, what's the address for that inn we got, man? You mean Troll Skull Manor? It's on Troll Skull. Oh, okay. You know where that's at, uh, Bryn? Troll Skull Manor and Troll Skull? Yeah. Hey, was that Siggy? Was that Siegfried I heard? Yeah, man, that's him. And he starts yelling at your ring, Siegfried! 
Remember that time yes. that, I, that I almost set the place on fire? Yes, have you learned to not play with torches or is that why you're bald over there? No, that's that's uh that's uh part of the order, the the edict. You know, we we keep ourselves clean, you know. It's all about keeping clean, you know, and being being cleansed, you know. Well, sounds like you're getting good for your pun. Make sure you eat properly and make sure you stay away from those troll skull girls. Even though we live there, you know how they can be. And make sure you don't miss your schooling. Absolutely, man. I, I've been working on it. I, I'm, you know, learning new spells every day. All righty, well. I'll let you all get back to your business. I have to finish writing this letter. A bit distracted. My apologies. I need to make sure my pensmanship is perfect for this. The sound from the ring cuts out, and Bryn looks at you expectantly, Samuel, and says, Troll Skull Alley, huh? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a rough place. Rough place. We had a couple of members. Uh, they, they came back from there uh, pretty beat up last time they were down there in Cliffside. That happens again. We're trying to clean the neighborhood up down there, and you know I'm not going to tolerate any nonsense. Well, I, I didn't know you that long, you know. But I, I'm glad. Yeah. To, I'm glad to see that you're all right. Um, how's everybody else doing? Oh, uh, they're all doing good. Uh, Nick got kicked out of the Inquisitors. His badge doesn't work anymore. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I kind of like the badge. I'm really hoping I can get one at some point for something. We'll say, um, if you if you ever uh, you know need any help at all, you know, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm usually uh, helping out here, or I'm helping out somewhere else in the city. You know, we're 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 everywhere now. The, the followers, you know, we're we're trying to do what we can. You know, especially with how crazy it's been getting lately. Yeah, man, I understand. And like I said, if you ever want to come out our way, let us know, and I'll buy you a drink. Absolutely, I appreciate. Well. Uh, I'm actually not allowed to drink anymore. I hope you appreciate that. I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a rain check on that drink. I tell you what, I'll buy you dinner. How about that? Well, that would be awesome. Maybe I could bring some of my friends along, and we can make a, a big dinner party out of it. You know that sounds expensive, but I'm down. Notes are written. Anyway, man, I gotta go. I'll catch you later, uh, Brian. All right, man. It's good to see you. You too, man. Stay safe. We'll do. Later. All right, I'm going to smile and wave at Yasmina again as I'm going back by. Almost trip over my feet doing so. I, and, should uh, <laughs> I should mention that Bryn had the look of a bipedal sphinx cat. He looked like a sphinx cat somebody had, had uh, or, or essentially looks like, you know what a sphinx cat looks like. He looked like a cat somebody had, had shaved. Oh, that means he looks like Beerus off a of Dragon Ball. Exactly. Nice. Shame he's not a monk. You don't want to upset him if you know what's good for you. So as you begin heading back, um, you hear the familiar sounds of the whinnying of the Pegasi and Mr. R's voice ringing out overhead. Whoa! And the carriage comes to a rolling stop in front of you all. And the door to the side of the carriage is flung open and the familiar sight of Linda Wrighton as she runs and leaps into Byron's arms. <laughs> Beer, it's great to see you. And <sighs> she looks at you with just a sparkle in her eye and she says, I've missed you so much. So much has gone on since you've gone. I know, I've been gone a while. You too. And and on the rest of you, um, on, where where are the rest of your companions? And You seem to have some new friends here as well. I, I don't know these two. We'll talk on the way. We need to get to the end. Somewhere safe. Okay, but right away. And she turns around and, be, and she grabs one of your hands and she begins leading you towards the carriage. You guys ready? I suppose so. You guys are going to climb into the carriage. Six, 
office next to Mr. R and starts casting dancing lights. Okay. As you are... Mr. R nudges both Ginger and Sassafras, the Pegasi. The carriage leaps into the air and you begin flying out to the west and to the south towards the cliffside district. Are we still going up the elevator? Yes, the elevator is going. It's, you guys are several hundred feet below the upper ward. And as the the platform is ascending, you're noticing that you are the only two on this platform at the moment. And in the distance, as the platform is slowly raising up, you can just hear a strange noise coming from the little speaker on the podium, like, <laughs> I love going up, I love going down every single day. I believe that music, oh, horrible. <laughs> I mean, it's lovely. It's lovely music. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I guess they call it elevate music. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> All right. What well, what's better than elevated music? So what's not, what's another story? Okay, your turn, Nick. Uh, stories. Uh, no, no, no. About me. A child. There's story. a child that fell off the platform. I think we we're in the wrong mindset here. You gotta <laughs> think about this. I mean. Child fell off. I think that's you know there, there might be a culprit. Somebody pushed him, or he could have accidentally fell. But I don't know. If he accidentally fell. I think there's a little mystery going on here. See, this is why we work together so well. I heal, and then I don't worry about it at all. And you are the one who solves the mystery. I love you, Nick. She gives a little. little. I'm gonna pull out my notepad and start to, like writing little notes. Mm. Something doesn't feel right about this. As the platform, as you get towards about the middle point between the middle ward and the upper ward of Central Plateau, um, you notice um, the top of, at the top, the middle section between the towers, you hear the little tinny voice say, Hold on, we're about to transition to the next track, and next up upper bridge and the dais separates now from the side of the wall hovering over towards a hovering and floating metal cylinder with several spokes equidistant out from the center and the dais begins floating towards it and you can see another one not too far away several a few a few yards away from it and you can see other another platform which is lowering down and then moving towards another tower. And just above, you can see a long bridge which is stretching out from one district to another. I think it was over there. Oh, can't this thing go any faster? I'm going to tap my foot like, ah, oh, oh, come on. The fog is, is thick, and the moisture is wet, and you, you can feel this moisture wicking you in the face. And through this, this traveling, this experience, you, your whole, your, all your garments now feel just damp, like you just ran through a rainstorm. I'm not really a fan of this fog. It's going to be hard to see, you know, where he landed, you know what I mean. Yeah, this fog's kind of strange. I haven't really seen it this foggy, I think, ever. You start to hear a strange noise as the first, the sound of the docking, as the platform docks with the cylinder, with the equidistant spokes, this apparatus, and it begins to ascend as it ratchets into place, and you can hear the humming and thrumming energy of the machinery as it, you're starting now to ascend to the bridge proper. And you're starting to hear this strange noise. It's like a... Uh, hey, Mr. Voice in the elevator. 
Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Hello. We're almost there. Do, do you hear that sound? Is that normal? All I hear is the sounds of the sul the sultry sounds of the winds that blow through the uh, through the the valleys of Sharn. Is this what you do all day? Yes, I am a program. How are you? Uh... You're standing on my face right now. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. If I had a hand, I'd shake it. She, she turns to Nick, oh my gosh, I want to shoot the guy who programmed this thing. Ah, oh, I know, I a... can't believe a thing. Some wicked, twisted sense of humor. And that's why we have a sky coach. The platform continues to raise, and finally you see the edges, the bottom of the bridge, come into... To and it begins slowing down as it gets closer and docks within a, a few feet of the, the bridge proper. And the platform says, Thank you for using me! Come again! Check out my cousin, he's on the other side. His name's Daryl. Nah, I'm just kidding. He's also an XR9000. Alright, thank you, bye-bye. And I'm gonna grab her arm and run. <laughs> Uh, as you step off onto the bridge, the bridge itself um, it ex extends out. You can see proper um, on this upper level. You can see the towers and the streets beyond. You can see a few people walking within this district of this upper ward, but you don't see very many. In fact, looking across the bridge, all you see is just the bridge. You see on either side of the bridge, you see it illuminated with torches that are along these pillars that are linked along the edges of each side of the bridge and you see the thick fog which stretches and where the bridge begins from the platform you see a small little nodule like a sphere that is on either side of the bridge set up but not part of the 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 spire the little towers that that link up with these little torches and you see more um, along the edges of the bridge scattered like set on the ground but you don't see any individual on the bridge. It's far too, the fog is far too thick at this level, at this height. Even with the wind blustering in the distance, it doesn't seem to be um, blowing this mist at all. If anything, it just seems to make it that much more opaque and that much more difficult to see. But given your thoughts of where the child fell, the distance and the arc, um, it appears that the child came from about the halfway point of this bridge in front of you, far away from where you are now. Let's go check out the halfway point. I think that's my calculations on where this child fell. I'm going to pull out my notebook and kind of show her a little picture that I drew on the way up of, like, the, the math. Of, you know, X here, this is where the child was, and this is the bridge up here, so let's go. Okay, well, I'll be on the lookout for her, the mother. I, you know, I saw the child... As you, uh, we're running. you step off of the platform, and as you begin to run towards the bridge, and you run a, a great distance, you find another mid-section with two more of the ascension and descension platforms. And you see, again, it, it continues on with these, these, spindly, um, sp these spindly sections of the bridge that stretch off with the... The, the, the little spires with the, uh, the, the torches set on the ends in, within the sconces. And as you pass over this section, you hear this loud warning noise, this audible ah, 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 and there's a rumble and you can feel it in your legs. And this, the section of the bridge that you're standing on, about 20 yards behind you, the bridge starts separating from the other bridge and splits and you can feel the bridge pulling away from that section and it pulls away 50 yards and then stops and you feel the, the vibration violently as the bridge stops <laughs> and you hear this audible sound speaking in stereo in unison from both 
dais platforms within this section of the bridge. You hear this audible. XR 9000 out of order currently. We apologize for the inconvenience. And you hear another noise. That noise that you heard once before when the dais was raising. You hear that. And in the distance, just beyond the fog, you can see what looks like a glowing chunk of crystal, which is currently arcing up over the bridge, the top of the bridge, and someone standing on it. Thick. You can't make out the details, but they seem to be wearing a billowing cloak, which is cast behind them as they are arcing out over the bridge. And you just watch as it opens its cloak up wide and several spherical orbs just start shooting out from the cloak and sprouting wings and they all begin flying wildly and flying towards you both and I need you both to roll initiative. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Thirteen. Mm. Uh, Nick. And we'll just adjust you guys on the map, and then I'm going to share a map with you. Ooh. You know, Jeremy, man, if you didn't say roll initiative, I was just about to take a pot shot at him. I was like, you know what, I'm going to pull out my pistol and shoot at him. <laughs> and they're like, roll initiative. Like, oh, okay, I guess the... <laughs> oh, I was right. I had a feeling he was a bad guy. Why should have been his, the, the kid's mother? The... No, I mean, he's on a crystal with robes, you know, all evil looking. You know, maybe the mother has a crystal and robes. Well, maybe she threw him off, then that would be as bad as Byron's mother. You never know. <laughs> you know what? I think it is Byron's mother. Uh, Nick, you ready for this? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm gonna drop my crossbow. Okay. Oh, I've always wanted to fight an unidentified creature before. You can just make out the creature as it is flying around on this green... It's a flat top chunk of green crystal. Green lightning is arcing out. And it just zooms out towards the center of the bridge above the bridge and it pulls out a long rapier from its side and it gestures towards both of you specifically though it seems to be pointing its rapier at you Zara All of a sudden, the little squat orbs that were on the sides, laying on the ground, they all sprout legs and they all begin running down the the bridge, just like sort of like a clackety 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 metal legs on stone. And all of a sudden, you see a central blue glowing eye, and an arc of energy emits from its head towards you, Zara. Holy crap! Bad creatures. And the first one is a natural 20. And I need you to make a 
constitution save. Or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> make a strength save, excuse me. Not a constitution save. So, Zara, you just feel this wave of energy just Better. blast out and strike you. And you feel like it was almost as if the wind was blasting you backwards, but you held your ground. You just leaned into it as it blasted you. But you can just feel this concussive wave it hit you. As it was almost as if you were being slammed into by some sort of creature. Like it was like a full, full, fully strong animal, like checked you. It then fires at you again. A second concussive blast arcing out across the bridge. No! Uh. And, and I'm, I'm out. <laughs> and Nicholas, you watch as Zara is blasted off of her feet and thrown back five feet onto the ground unconscious. <gasps> Now you're watching as these creatures that are, are coming towards you are now sprouting little mechanical manacles, it looks like, from the sides of them. And one of the flying ones is now arcing towards you. And you watch as this drips and licks of flame begin spilling out from a grating in the front of it. You can just make out, and your eyes go wide as a fireball comes flying towards you. And two concussive blasts fly towards you. And you just manage to sidestep out of the way as they fly towards your face. And as you, you spin and parry out of the way, you look to the right and you just see just to the northeast where you're standing, another one does the exact same thing. Two bursts of flame arc out over the bridge straight towards you. The first ball of fire hitting the cobblestone street. The second one blast you in the side of your shoulder. And one of this squat insect-like creatures with has two little pincers that look now look like manacles and it's now running towards Zara's down body. You just see its legs go as it's running towards her body. And Nicholas, it is your turn. I'm going to take a, a shot at that uh, creature that's trying to put manacles on, on Zara. That is a miss. Oh. And now it's going to run over to her. Okay. Uh, 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 I don't have one in my inventory. What are you looking for? A potion of healing. I put it on my belt. <laughs> yeah, you put it on my Looking at her uh, slipping in and out of unconscious, you just see the, the the belt on the side of Zara. You can just see underneath her cloak the crystalline uh, container holding the red liquid as it's sloshing around from her falling down and skidding across the cobblestone. Two, there's two of them. I'll, I'll grab one and I'll shove it down her throat. Yeah. Okay. 
That's 2d4 plus 2, I think. Uh, there's a greater and a... I don't regular. care which one. I just grabbed one. I don't know which one it was. Roll a d20. Let's find out which one it is. Alright. I'll say 10 or higher, it's the greater one. Uh, it's the regular nope. one. I'm just grabbing. I mean, I'm, I don't know anything about here. It says 1d4 plus 4. 2d4 plus 1. Or plus 2, excuse me. Dude. Okay, so you, your eyes snap awake as the this burning sensation in your, thro your throat as you... You snap awake, Zara, and you come back with six points of healing, six health. Cool. Oh. I'm gonna end my turn there. I was gonna say, did you roll initiative? Because oh, there you are. Me? Yeah. Let me. Just yes, I'm the last. I rolled a six. Oh no. All right, let me take the unconscious off of you. There you go, you're now <laughs> wide awake and you just see this tick-like creature the size of a ball, which is coming towards you. You can see its front legs have transformed into manacles and looks like it's getting ready to grab you. <laughs> and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Nicholas, staring past the con now conscious form of Zara, listening to her ragged breathing, you just see another one of those orb-like creatures, and it's now getting ready to fire on you again. They can't hit worth nothing. But they're not meant to. I'm just too dodge. Too you manage to... Uh, the first one actually just goes right over your head and burns a little bit of the top of your your hair away. Another one flies and hovers close to you, and is now you hear this the sound of this churning and burning like a furnace, and it's like winding up, and it looks like it's getting ready to spout straight down from where it is currently located. But yet, the, the thing, it's more like a patooey. And the, the first one, the little bit of fire, just sort of like, it's like a coughing, like a poof. And then second one, it was like a like a loogie launches out down at, straight at you. And now another one of the constructs is sprouting manacles. And is running straight towards you, Zara. Oh, and the other creatures, strange orb like creatures, all seem to now be running just hauling butt down the bridge towards you all. And Zara, it is your turn. Uh, um, Zara is gonna like, ha, huh, what is she gonna do? Let's see. Can she cast spells being prone? Yes, you can. But that's probably not a good idea. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, she's gonna get up, which takes her action, correct? Actually, no, it's half your movement to stand up. Oh, okay. Uh, then I'm gonna stand up, and I am going to swing my, uh, my halberd. Uh, El Spidito. El Spidito? That is a miss. Oh, so good. Don't forget, you have two attacks with your yeah. feature. Yep, I'm gonna 
kind of like shake my head. 